Safety priorities are, are your eyeglasses, number one. Um, never, ever, ever, ever do it without eye protection. It only takes one flake to get in your eye uh, to make you go blind. Um, and if you do happen to decide to try making stone tools and you do get a flake in your eye, um, whatever you do, um, don't rub. Don't rub your eye because basically what you're doing is you're taking an extremely sharp object, even though it's very small, and you're just sort of grinding it around on the surface of your eyeball, and next thing you know, you're blind. So um, if you do happen to get a flake in your eye, best thing to do is uh, flush it out with water. Step on your foot, make yourself cry, do whatever you have to do, but just don't actually um, rub, rub your eye. One of the, the first things people will notice when they actually start making stone tools is that because they're dealing with a, an extremely sharp um, medium, they'll cut themselves quite frequently. Um, even in the last couple of days, both Eugene and I have actu actually cut ourselves. Um, the, the benefit of being cut with uh, some of the material that we're using here is the edges are so sharp that they heal really quickly. So even though you may bleed a lot while you're doing it, in a couple of days your cut is actually um, healed up quite nicely. Um, you'll find if you flint nap in your shorts or you're wearing sandals, even though the flakes aren't directly hitting you, you step up, you stand up, you cut yourself. So always wear long pants, always wear shoes. Um, I would always, I'd recommend having band-aids available. Um, that's another, another thing that you should always have with you. A, a fairly big safety concern are, are your actual, your hands. Um, a lot of the stuff that you do in making stone tools requires, is done with your hands, or, and in my case, I use my leg a lot. Um, what I would recommend is uh, always have a piece of leather between <coughs> yourself and the rock that you're working. If it's on your leg, make sure there's a piece of leather on your leg or a piece of denim or heavy cloth or, so or something, something on your leg other than just your pants so that if when a flake drives off, it drives off and cuts that piece of material versus your pants or worse yet, your leg underneath. It's the same thing if you're doing anything in your hands and um, you are going to be chipping in, into your hands, make sure you always have a piece of leather between the, the stone and your skin because um, this is just basically going to make your, if you do chip like this, um, your hand's just going to end up looking like hamburger. It doesn't make you look tough if you uh, flint nap without leather in your hand, it just makes you look stupid. So always make sure you have, have a piece of leather um, between you and the stone that, you, that you're working. Jason, can I interject? Uh, uh, when I do a pressure flaking, I have a, a piece of leather, and then I have a smaller piece of leather that uh, protects my hand that I'm holding the preform that I'm flaking in. And eventually, uh, the uh, uh, piece of leather does get cut up, so I can just uh, throw it away and uh, uh, pick up a uh, new piece. And uh, this piece uh, does not uh, get uh, cut up uh, very seldom, and, but it does get uh, sweaty, so I'll have to replace that. But in uh, all my years of uh, pressure flaking uh, with the method that I have, I have never had a flake cut into my palm. It's a matter of protection and caution. And when I'm uh, doing pressure flaking, I do it in the uh, basement of my uh, home. It's a closed environment, so I uh, use uh, a dust mask to protect uh, the, the uh, uh, some material, especially obsidian, uh, creates a lot of uh, micro uh, dust, which could uh, really affect your lungs. And uh, what I do when I finish uh, napping, I brush my uh, clothes off because there's all kinds of dust and uh, uh, empty out my shoes. Because uh, even uh, uh, yesterday when I was walking home, uh, I felt a flake in my boot. And I have uh, pretty high boots and good leg protection. Uh, and if you're um, um, working with obsidian, the obsidian sticks onto uh, any shoes and you don't want to transport it where other members of the family are walking. Um, one of the other things that I recommend um, 
is just get up, take a little walk. Even if you're not that tired, get up, walk around, stretch your legs. Um, because if you're sitting down and you're actually, you'll see that Eugene's using a lot of different muscles. And even though he may not be tired, getting up, walking around sort of loosens you up. It gets you back into the groove. If you're fr if you're breaking something all the time, it allows you the opportunity to take a break, regroup, come back to it kind of thing. So uh, don't don't push yourself is, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, as far as dip touch, uh, I uh, put my dip touch into uh, a dumpster which goes into the uh, landfill site. You don't want to dump it out in the uh, uh, countryside where somebody years later will uh, interpret it as an archaeological site. Which leads us to, I guess, some of the ethical um, issues that are, are surrounding um, making stone tools. Um, the number one thing is even if what you produce um, is a simple retouch flake or a simple tool, um, those are the same tools that were being used in the past and um, either if you were to go lose it, it could get lot, it could be misinterpreted later on as something that was used in the past. So basically what I recommend to, to people that make stone tools and they know they're not going to, they're, they, they, there's the possibility of them being lost, is to mark it with something. Um, one of the things I, I use for anything that actually leaves my house is as a diamond scribe and I just put my name on it. And if it's, that's as a simple flake tool uh, to a projectile point, I always sort of mark it in some way. That way, if it does happen to get lost later on, it's marked in a way that when someone actually takes the time to look at it, they can say, oh, wait a minute, someone wrote their name on this. Why is their name on this, right? Um, it also minimizes the opportunity for um, some people to take those artifacts and try and sell them. Um, if you've marked your, your tools and your replicas, they're less likely to be able to sell them. Um, which is which is not a is is never a good thing. Or what I do uh, quite frequently is, uh, if I'm uh, making uh, say points for uh, uh, to give away as gifts, uh, which I done for, uh, for uh, the uh, First Nations uh, people in the Yukon last year, I used exotic material that came from India. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's another way of doing it is if you, if you um, say for example, if you made a Clovis point out of Brazilian agate, not really gonna, there's not much chance that um, people are gonna look at it and go, oh, that's definitely a real thing, especially if they know what they're, what they're doing. Some people might get confused, but um, if, if you don't get the opportunity to um, mark your points, make it out of something that's not a local material. Um, that's that's one way to, to eliminate the confusion. Um, the other thing, in, an easier way to mark a lot of the stone tools is just take a permanent marker and write on it and then cover it with some nail polish. That's another way to do it. Um, yeah. Still another one is take photographs of your uh, replicas, which I do when I make for the uh, uh, museums or interpretive centers. Yeah, yeah so do I. And the, 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 the one thing I like to point out about that is um, anybody who does make a stone tool, they should be proud of what they've made. So why not sign it? Um, there's no reason to not sign it. You made it, you should be proud of it, put your name on it. So um, it just minimizes the confusion later down, on down the road and you should be proud of what you just made. So definitely, definitely sign, sign anything that you make. Um, the other issue that comes up a lot with, with making stone tools is the actual, actual tool stone itself. Um, we aren't the only people that actually used these quarries. Um, they were used by people in the past, and so they are, in a lot of cases, archaeological sites. And we, you, you just can't go in and randomly pick up stuff. Um, they're, because they're archaeological sites, they need to be respected as such. What I would suggest um, as an alternative is with all the development that goes on uh, worldwide, take a road cut. Go to a road cut. You can collect the same rock there as you could on the, the actual quarry site that's half a kilometer away. There's, an op there's a possibility that there's tool stone there. Um, 
riverbeds. There's another example. Gravel quarries. Um, gravel quarries, construction sites, anything that's already been previously disturbed. Um, if you need tool stone, um, that's definitely one, one way to go. Um, an alternative is, and it's, it's not for everybody, is use modern materials. Um, glass, there's an abundance of glass just about anywhere. Um, and I'll be honest, I think a, a glass point is just as pretty as any other one. So um, you can definitely make, make stone tools using modern, modern materials as well. Yes, I obtain a lot of my um, uh, uh, nappable material from a gravel pit and uh, that's where I uh, also test the material because uh, often in the gravel pit uh, you have a lot of crushed uh, rock already which looks like uh, debitage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I, I would suggest even in, in situations like that, what I'll do is I'll, if I'm busting up cobbles outside, outside somewhere, I will actually chuck a couple of pennies in there. And so even if it's in a gravel pit or even somewhere, just chuck a couple of pennies in with it and that way there's no confusion that, you know, when someone's looking at it going, well, okay, there's a 2011 penny in with this debitage. What's, what's that all about, right? So um, basically do whatever you can to make sure you're not, if you are going to disturb something um, that isn't an archaeological site, put something there to, to show that you were there. That's, that's what I would suggest.